the difference between cycling kits and tri kits. Learn how to pour concrete, NTK. Good morning, Trainiacs. So last week, if you saw, we got the new Trainiac Triathlon Terran kits. So beautiful. And I ended up getting the whole shoot and match. I got knee warmers, I got arm warmers, I got a jacket, I got a vest, I got a cycling kit, I got a one-piece tri kit, I got a two-piece tri kit, I got a running tech tee. If it was available, your boy got it. And what's really nice about that is because I've got an identical manufacturer making cycling stuff and triathlon stuff, I can compare the difference between cycling kits and tri kits. Cycling, tri. So let me start by showing you the differences with a tri top and the front of a cycling top. Now typically, a tri top zipper does not go all the way down. It starts about here. That is often because well, number one, you don't ever want to have your tri top fully undone. Aerodynamics is the big concern in triathlon. And a lot of triathlons have a rule that you can't have a zipper that gets unzipped down past the point of your sternum. Cycling kits, however, are made to be taken on and off really easily, really frequently because you're cycling day after day after day. So the zipper comes all the way down. Now, in addition to that, you can see cycling top has sleeves. Tri top, no sleeves. This has been changing recently that the aerodynamically designed tri kits that aren't designed to dissipate heat actually do have sleeves that come off the side, but that's a rare thing. Still, most tri tops don't have sleeves. It's so your armpits can cool themselves, whereas that's not a massive concern in a cycling kit. Cycling kit also has a little bit of a collar here. Tri kit does not. So here we're looking at getting less material so that you can cool yourself down. Here, more material all around the collar and the sleeves. Now, can you use a cycling top in triathlon? Absolutely. You're gonna be giving up a little bit of the ability to dissipate heat because you have sleeves and you've got more material. And because there's a little bit more material, you're not gonna be nearly as tight and scrunched up and aerodynamic. Now, looking at the back of the kit, we still have pockets in both. However, the pockets in a cycling jersey are really big because you think it was cycling, you might be out there for four, five, six, seven hours, long touring rides, you gotta pack your phone, you gotta pack flat repair kits, you gotta pack money. You're out there for a long time, you don't have a transition to come back to, whereas in a triathlon, you've always got a transition where you can re-top up these little pockets here on the back. Now the shorts are massively different between a tri-short and a cycling bib short. Cycling bib shorts are the gold standard. If you really wanna step it up and look like you know what you're doing, you want a cycling bib short. Why this is the way it is with the shoulder straps and all this material along the side is because your body is doing a little bit of swaying back and forth on the saddle, you want a fair bit of structure and compression right in that lower back and hip region. In a try, however, it's all about keeping you cool as much as possible. And because you're not out there for nearly as long, unless you're doing a full Ironman, you don't quite need that structure. I find that both the tri kit and the road kit have similar amounts of compression along the calves. Nope, those are quads. So there's no real difference there, but it's basically the structure that you get in here that keeps your body stable so that you can put more power into the pedals for a longer period of time without your lower back getting sore. Also, because you're bent over so much and you got people drafting you in behind, if this goes up higher, all the way up your back, you're not gonna be showing people full moon. And then last thing, the size of the chamois is immensely different between a tri kit and a road kit. Oh, that actually looks really dirty. So tri kit, very small chamois, basically just a little, little tiny bit protecting your undercarriage, but not so big that it's gonna get sopping wet in the swim and you're gonna be running with diaper butt. Now on a road cycling bib, you want as much softness and protection all around your dirty bits here. So 
Can you, again, do a triathlon in a cycling kit? Sure, but you're gonna be running around with diaper butt. You're probably gonna be getting blisters where you don't wanna be getting blisters. So yeah, Traniacs, tri kit, cycling kit, they are similar, but fairly different. Like I say, can you do a road cycling race in your tri kit? Yeah, absolutely. You're gonna look really silly and the road cyclists are gonna make fun of you behind your back. And can you do a triathlon in your cycling kit? Yeah, but you're not gonna be very aerodynamic and you're probably gonna have soggy diaper butt. Nobody wants soggy diaper butt. Speaking of soggy diaper butt, this morning I walked around the pool in my Speedo. That workout probably, ooh, probably needs a bit of an explanation. That five, four, three, two breathing part at the end, what you're doing there is it's called the hypoxic set. So you're like robbing your body of oxygen so it becomes more efficient at using the oxygen that it has. It's kind of strange to think that to be able to breathe easier, you basically need to suffocate yourself or it was a nasty trick that Pat was playing on me and I fell for it. Uh, next thing here, we had an airport. Specifically, we we're flying to Vegas for Interbike, biggest bike convention in the world. Well, Eurobike bigger? Not sure. Biggest bike convention that I've ever been to. Going there to cover it. It's gonna be fun. Tomorrow, we do nothing but ride bikes at Demo Day. Wednesday, Thursday, we meet a bunch of bike companies, do some podcasting, see what the new gear and tech is out there. Maybe meet some fairly influential, well-known people, do some podcasts. It'll be fun. So much fun. Uh, fun story about the uh, old airport here. So I hand them my boarding pass and they say, oh, sir, you've been selected for random screening. And I'm like, tell me more. And they're like, no big deal. It's just electronics. You don't have much electronics, do you? And I'm like, this is gonna take a long time. So we get through that. It was actually fairly unscathed. Didn't take a whole long time. And then I go to customs and they say, what do you do for a living? And I say, I'm a YouTuber. And their face was, and then I'm all. That was not an easy check-in process. No siri bub. And last thing, thanks to NTK and Mel for holding down the fort while I'm gone. Uh, you know how I always say we, we are trying to build something with Triathlon Terran and we are having a fun time with this community? Well, um, I slammed Mel with a whole shirt ton of work last week and this week, uh, which she's covering for very admirably because she's awesome. And, um, I left Kim at home with this. Yeah, I started a demolition construction site for new triathlon Terran headquarters and then I'm like, see ya suckers, I'm out. Learn how to pour concrete, NTK. So thank you to the ladies in my life for taking care of things while I'm off riding bikes.